So, in the previous session, we have discussed about lastly the limitations of RTD. So, you see this RTD, the residence time distribution, is a partial, a segmental measure of non ideality that can be uh, there in a reactor. <coughs> but it does not give you the full picture, right. It gives us the information regarding how these different reactant packets, they are residing inside the reactor, but how they are interacting amongst each other, that specific information is missing in this overall or entire RTD analysis, so far whatever we have discussed, right. So, for that we require a mixing model and mixing models are based on a mixing hypothesis, okay. Now, before we go into the details of this mixing model, let us discuss some aspects of the model, right. See, in this model, they often contains adjustable parameters. Right. Say for a system, if I have an input x and output y and through modeling through this modeling approach, we have uh, finally inferred that y this uh, function of x is linear. Right. So, this is the outcome of modeling. However, because of some problems, maybe this problem in the measurement, problem in inaccessibilities, etc., we cannot actually calculate this m and c. However, we have predicted that this must be a linear model. The typical example we can say, and we will discuss it in filtration, that T divided by V is equal to Kc by 2 into V plus 1 by Q0 in filtration, right. In cake filtration, we know that where this T by V is Y and V here is X, right. And this Y and X are linear. However, we do not know what is the value of Kc, we cannot predict it from the model, we have to measure it, okay. Because this Kc contains the term alpha which is the specific cake resistance or Q0 contains the term Rn which is the filter medium resistance, etc. So, what we, we do there? We simply generate the data, we plot this Tv versus V and therefrom from the slope and intercept by using the statistical regression, we calculate this Kc and Q0. So, here you see, if I have uh, the scattered data points and we are fitting a best fit line, right, from the slope we can calculate m and this is the intercept. Now, for this purpose, what we can do? Say we have generated n numbers of data points. We may use n by 2 data points to calculate this m and c rest n by 2 is used for model validation, right. 
we are determining these values of the m and c from half of the set of these data points and the rest we are using to validate that specific model with the same values with the determined values of m and c. Now, here if I think that okay that I am unable to predict or we have uncertainties regarding whether it will be linear or quadratic. So, we say that okay actually it may be uh, some a naught x a square plus a 1 x plus a 2 right. So, that contains 3 adjustable parameters. Now, it may be linear if a naught is 0 and it reduces to the same expression same previous expression. Now, here it contains 3 adjustable parameter, but if I am more accurate in my model I can predict surely that this will be a linear function, but this may be quadratic as well as linear at the cost of an additional adjustable parameter. So, inferiority of a model formulation or alternatively the suitability of a model right the appropriateness of a model can be gauged in terms of the number of adjustable parameters it contains. So, from this perspective in RTD analysis and the mixing model of RTD analysis we mostly restrict ourselves to two parameters model. Once we, we go for 3, 4, 5 parameters we will be getting more accurate results, but at the same time uh, there is a borderline you see there is a borderline between a mathematical model and statistical regression. If I have a heavily complex this form of data still it can be represented by 4 or 5 uh, parameters. So, if a model contains 4 or 5 adjustable parameters it will no longer be a model, but rather it is a statistical experiment. So, if the analysis or if our proposition has to qualify as a model then it must be containing hardly 2 adjustable parameters particularly for when we are talking about the mixing models of RT. So, see uh, this adjustable parameters based there is a classification of mixing models. based on the number of adjustable parameters. So, group 1 is 0 parameter model, now here definitely as it is related to mixing we will go for either some extreme form of mixing hypothesis that is there are generally two models one is called complete segregation and another is called maximum mixedness. Number 2 it is one parameter model only one adjustable parameter we will discuss it in detail. First it is the tank in series model and there is dispersion model. and there will be definitely more accurate group of two parameter models which we will not discuss. So, we will be discussing this complete segregation tank in series and dispersion models right. So, you see 
that when we start discussing about the mixing model, we must think of some defining parameters or defining uh, these terms, not parameters, I should say terms. So, first term, rather terminologies, first is macro mixing. What does it mean? Macro mixing provides the information about information about the distribution of residence time. So, in a sense, it is <coughs> nothing but the RTD information. Right, which we have already discussed for. Next is micro mixing information. So, what is micro mixing? Micro mixing will give you the idea that how the reactants with different residence time they are interacting with each other. So, it provides the information about how the reactant packets having different residence time are interacting with each other. Right. So, <clears throat> definitely in relation to the question how the reactant packets of different residence time are interacting with each other. So, in relation to that we can actually think of two extreme models of mixing right or rather micro mixing and they are actually reflected in these two zero parameter model. One is the complete segregation where they are not at all interacting with each other. So, right, two extremes of mixing. One is no interaction at all. And this respective fluid is called the macrofluid hypothesis. Macrofluid means those fluids where the different microscopic or mesoscopic packets, they are not interacting amongst each other. So, no interaction at all that is called the macrofluid and the rest is complete interaction. that is called microfluid. Right? So, complete segregation model is based on macrofluid hypothesis and maximum mixedness is based on microfluid hypothesis. Right? So, we will first discuss this complete segregation model. So, you see in complete segregation, uh, if, if I have any reactor to model, what we will do? We will simply try to predict the final conversion based on the RTD information and the 
kinetic data. Because we have seen an out uh, actually uh, formulated the structure as RTD information plus or rather the kinetic data plus the RTD information plus the mixing model gives you the overall real reactor model, right. So, in complete segregation how to predict the conversion. So, we have a reactor, any reactor. <clears throat> now, a packet enters at time t equal to 0 and it is residing there for time t, right, it is moving out. And there is another packet, say t1, time t1 is the residence time. Another packet which is moving also through the reactor, but it has got a residence time t2, right. So, these packets, the reactant packets behave as a tiny batch reactor. With batch time same as the corresponding residence time. So, you see how we can uh, visualize this scheme that individual uh, these packets, reactant packets, they are behaving like a batch reactor having the batch time same as that of the residence time. So, we think of a chamber with multiple sidewise outlets, right. And the respective residence time of the reactor from here the residence time equal to 0 and we will think that at the end the residence time tends to infinity, right. It is an infinitely large reactor, it is a model approach, how to visualize this scheme, it is not a real reactor, we are trying to model this in the form or in the schematic of this, okay. Now, if a packet has a residence time T1, it will move out sidewise. If it has got a residence time T2, it will move out sidewise. It has got a residence time T3, T4 and a very large one. Then all these packets will be mixed up in a mixer and generating the final product, okay. So, this is our scheme which exactly reflects our hypothesis of complete segregation that different packets which are having different residence time, they are behaving like batch and their batch time is just same as the residence time of the actual packets in these reactors. So, you see packets having the residence time or fraction of the packets rather fraction of packets having residence time between T to T plus DT is equal to ET DT. We know from the probability distribution uh, of this RTD analysis. And let 
द कन्वर्शन और बैच कन्वर्शन और इन बैच मोड फॉर अ बैच टाइम टी इज एक्सेटी लेट से द रिएक्शन इज ए गिविंग प्रोडक्ट right so the contribution in the overall conversion for this packet will be the conversion for residence time t in batch mode into the respective fraction that is ettd so that's the equation for this model and the final equation final working equation so if you simply integrate it will be giving you 0 to infinity x a t e t d t so if we have a fast order reaction what will happen let's try to analyze it so this is our final model equation the model here in tally it's uh, it involves a conceptual idea and that we formalize through this equation right so example first order reaction now we know this dx a dt for batch mod batch mod dx a dt equal to k into 1 minus x a so if we integrate we have already discussed it in interpretation of batch reactor data that minus of ln 1 minus x a equal to kt so x a equal to 1 minus e to the power minus kt right so x a bar is 0 to infinity 1 minus e to the power minus kt into et dt so if we break this integral into two zero to infinity et dt the area under the key curve is definitely 1 so 1 minus integral e to the power minus kt et dt for first order reaction now let's do it for now specify the reactor pfr let's do it for pfr for pfr et equal to delta of t minus tau for pfr et equal to delta of t minus tau we have discussed it so x a bar 1 minus 0 to infinity e to the power minus kt delta of t minus tau dt so we know this property once again we have to use the property of the delta function that minus infinity to plus infinity delta of t minus oh sorry delta of x minus tau into gx dx equal to g of tau so uh, here it will be 1 minus e to the power minus k tau right is being predicted by this complete segregation model now you see conversion what we can predict from design equation conversion from design equation you see that uh, tau by c a not equal to x a divided by for first order k c a not into 1 minus x a sorry this integral dx a 0 to x a right so c a not cancels out so k tau minus of ln 1 minus x a so x a equal to 1 minus e to the power minus so exactly these two are similar or same 
right next let's go for mfr or cstr now there this et equal to 1 by tau e to the power minus t by tau so x a bar is 0 to infinity 1 minus 1 by tau e to the power minus t by tau into e to the power minus k t d t right so it is 1 minus 1 by tau 0 to infinity e to the power minus k plus 1 by tau t d t so we have 1 minus 1 by tau e to the power minus k plus 1 by tau t divided by k minus of k plus 1 by tau and evaluated over 0 to infinity. So what is going to happen? For infinity it is 0, for 0 it is 1 and minus sign cancels out. So it is 1 minus 1 by tau, numerator is 1, 1 plus, sorry 1 by tau plus k. So it is 1 by tau minus 1 by tau, tau by 1 plus k tau, this cancels out. So 1 plus k tau minus 1, so it is k tau divided by 1 plus k tau, right. So let us discuss it for the conversion of MFR from actual design equation. Conversion from design equation. So it is tau by C n r equal to x a by k into C n r into 1 minus x a. So C n r cancels out k tau is equal to x a by 1 minus x a. So k tau divided by 1 plus k tau k tau divided by 1 plus k tau is equal to x a. Again we have a match with this design equations prediction and whatever we have predicted from complete segregation model. Now here we may actually interrogate this entire model scheme as okay for PFR there is no actual mixing, so complete segregations models validity to predict the conversion of PFR for fast order reaction, it is okay, we can agree with that. However, for MFR, it is complete mixing, the MFR is a model reactor where we have perfect mixing. Still, the complete segregations prediction is exactly matching with the design equation of MFR. Why? What is the reason? The reason is same what we have explained, the match the model prediction matches with the design equation. design equation with that of the design equation as it is a first order kinetics. It is a first order kinetics and that kinetics is independent of any reaction at this concentration term. X a is 1 minus e to the power minus k t. So, there is no C a naught term and as a consequence we have a perfect match of complete segregation model with the design equation for both MFR and CSTR. So, if you repeat that, I am not going to repeat it right now. If we repeat that solution with this uh, second order equation 2 a giving product, right. So, you will see that the prediction of complete segregation is deviant from 
that of design equation. So, this justifies actually that why first order actually matching irrespective of our mixing hypothesis with whatever we are predicting here, right. So, maximum mixedness is another model mostly we use it for tubular type of reactor, right. So, there you will see that uh, the hypothesis and actually we have discussed the hypothesis based on the fact that all these packets they are completely interacting not tubular reactor I am mistaken though it is valid for any reactor, but it is both the models complete segregation and maximum mixedness they are rather imperfect they are though definitely from this learning point of view they are important, but from real life application they are not at all important because they actually formalize to extreme ideas of mixing which never happens in reality. So, mixing itself the degree or grade of mixing is to be measured right and that measurement may not be direct measurement that how what will be the resulting concentration at different points that will not be the case because modeling approach means you will be thinking of something else totally different right which is hypothetical. But the performance of that system must replicate the system what we are going to study. So, from this perspective we will try to understand this tank in series model. See what happens and how elegant the thinking may be that from our simple concept of tanks, tanks means here the CSTR, CSTR connected in series the finite numbers of CSTRs connected in series, how it may be used to actually represent the real reactor behavior that we will try to understand in this chapter or in this specific section of tank in series model. See, so topic here is tank in series model. So, it is one parameter, there will be one adjustable parameter. See, if I think of a scale and on one hand we have it is it is the CSTR assemblies in series right. So, this is in this direction we have number of CSTRs. So, here n equal to 1 and here n tends to infinity right. Now, if you go on number of CSTRs in series right. If you go on connecting from starting from a single CSTR if you go on connecting the CSTRs in series. So, initially we have started with one CSTR a CSTR itself or rather I say the CSTR an infinite CSTR means a PFR. So, the hypothesis is the idea is not the hypothesis the idea is then finite number of CSTR must replicate the behavior of a real reactor right. So, the hypothesis or the idea is the finite number of CSTRs must replicate the behavior of real reactors, right? And that is the basic idea, fundamental idea of tank in series model. So, obviously, the adjustable parameter here which somehow indirectly represents or quantifies the degree of mixing is the number of CSTRs that is tanks in series. Right. So, you see that what will be uh, this criteria based on which we will confirm 
that this many numbers of CSTR exactly replicate the behavior of the real reactor. So that criteria is RT. We will test the RTD. So here the baseline data, baseline experimental data is the E curve, right? And what we will do from the D curve, we will try to find the number of CSTRs in series which exactly replicate the same E curve. Right. So, how to calculate that? This is the approach of modeling. So, let us consider three CSTRs in series. They are of equal size. Right. They are of equal size. Let the space time of individual reactors be tau i. How to determine tau i that we will discuss later. Hmm. So, let us assume this is tau i. So, first we have to generate that if we connect three CSTRs in series, what will be the respective E curve at the final outlet? And uh, if we extend that to n, what will be the expression? And from this, this E curve of n CSTRs in series, what, how to determine the number of the CSTRs which will exactly replicate the real life RTD, uh, this real life E curve, whatever we have obtained through experiments on these real reactors. So, here let us have the tanks, the CSTRs. Individually, they are having a residence time of tau i. So, here it is a tracer injection experiment, right. From here to here, let the concentration curve be C1t, from here to here it is C2t and from here to here it is C3t, okay. So, it is a pulse input we have delivered. So, what will happen at the outlet of reactor 1, reactor 2 and reactor 3? So, for reactor 1, we know that C t equal to already we have discussed it C naught into e to the power minus t by tau, where t equal to 0, C equal to C naught. Now, this concentration stream with the volume flow rate V naught, the volume flow rate is V naught, volume flow rate of this inert liquid which may be water, which may be reactant if we are doing it online, right, it is entering the second reactor. So, for reactor 2, so here accumulation term is V into DC 2 DT, inflow term is V naught into C naught, uh, this is C 1, V naught into C 1 T. Outflow term V naught into C 2 T, right. So, tau i into D C 2 D T plus C 2 is equal to C naught into E to the power minus T by tau i. So, here we will divide it by tau i and we will consider that initial condition to be T equal to 0, C equal to 0 or C 2 equal to 0, right. So, why? 
because for this reactor once outlet as it is a perfectly mixed state we can get some concentration at time t equal to 0 that is initially which is c equal to c naught. However, when it enters to the reactor 2, so definitely at the outlet instantaneously at time t equal to 0, we may not or we actually do not have any tracer concentration. So, with that we can solve it and here the integrating factor is e to the power t by tau i. So, c2 d d t c2 into e to the power t by tau i is equal to c naught by tau i right. So, c2 into e to the power t by tau i 0 to in 0 to t is equal to c naught t by tau i right and again it is 0 to t. So, C2 at the lower limit it will vanish because C2 at time t equal to 0 is 0. So, C2 t becomes C naught t by tau i into e to the power minus t by tau i. So, it is fine at the outlet here we will get C2. Now, for reactor 3 again the same balance for the tracer will yield V dc 3 dt equal to V naught uh, the C 2 t minus V naught into C 3 t. So, tau i d C 3 d t equal to C 2 t or plus C 3 t equal to C 2 t. So, d C 3 d t plus 1 by tau i C 3 t equal to C naught t by tau i e to the power minus t by tau i. So, we have to do this here again the initial condition t equal to 0 then definitely C 3 equal to 0. So, if I simply solve this again by using the same integrating factor. I am erasing this diagram, it is pretty simple. So, you see that d d t of C 3 into e to the power plus t by tau i equal to C naught into t by tau i, right. So, C 3 into e to the power t by tau i equal to c naught into t square by factorial 2 actually it will be 2 here it is tau i right yeah it is tau i. So, c 3 t becomes c naught into t square divided by 2 tau i into e to the power minus t by tau i right. Now, once we have got the c 3 t we can find this E 3 t as C 3 t divided by 0 to infinity C 3 t d t. So, what is this integral? C 3 t d t equal to C naught into t square divided by 2 tau i e to the power minus t by tau i d t integral 0 to infinity. So, this will be typically the integration by parts and we have to do it twice. So, if I do that I am not doing this algebra. If I do that you will get this equal to t square divided by 2 tau i square yeah it is tau i cube not tau i square tau i cube yeah c 3 is ok there is some mistake I think c naught by tau i <coughs> 
2 tau i square. This ok, there was a tau i there, 1 by tau i. This will be squared, right. Whenever C2 contains tau i, so it is squared. So here we will have a square, right. So this will be q into e to the power minus t by tau i. So that is e3. So no, no, that is not, this is c0, this is the integral. So e3 is this c0 uh, substitution will result not in this but rather but C naught uh, C naught will be there and denominator will be 2 tau i, tau i cube into tau i cube. Right. So, E 3 t will be C naught into t square divided by 2 tau i into e to the power minus t by tau i divided by C naught into tau i. So, it is C naught into t, sorry, t square divided by 2 tau i cube into e to the power minus t by tau i. Right. That is E 3 t. So, what you can write here? is by principle of induction that e n t is equal to t to the power n minus 1, n minus 1 it will be changing to factorial tau i to the power n into e to the power minus t by tau i. Right. So, what you can do here, we can go for making it dimensionless and convert this expression to a dimensionless form. And we have to keep in mind that tau into this E is dimensionless, right. Let tau, the overall space time that is tau is equal to n into tau i tau be the be the overall space time that is this okay and let theta equal to t by tau right so theta equal to t divided by uh, tau i so it is tau by n right oh sorry this is theta equal to t by tau, so it is n into tau i. So, t by tau i is equal to n theta, right. And tau into e n t is e theta. Let this is e n theta. Hmm? So, e n t is t to the power n minus 1. So, theta into tau to the power n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial into tau i is tau by n to the power n into e to the power minus t by tau i and t by tau i is n theta. So, you see this theta and n. So, theta to the power n minus 1 into n to the power n 
by tau into n minus 1 factorial into e to the power minus n theta. So, tau into e n t which is e n theta is becoming n into theta to the power n minus 1 into n divided by n minus 1 factorial into e to the power minus n theta. So, this is the dimensionless form of the E function of n CSTRs in series. Hmm? And this can also justify that if you go on increasing n, the behavior of this exponential curve for n equal to 1 will tends to a spike C. So, here from we can also justify uh, infinite CSTRs in series is a PFR. So, how we can do that? So, here it is theta, here E n theta, simply think that this is for n equal to 1, this is n equal to 1 this is n equal to 2, this is n equal to 3, this is n equal to 4 and finally theta equal to 1 it spikes. So, n tends to infinity. Right. So, it will be somewhat higher, this will be also somewhat higher like this, like this. Okay. And uh, this curve will be like this, like this, like this, etc. Like this. So, this variation of E n theta with n also justifies what we have previously uh, proved it with a first order reaction, but this is much more general proof because there we have considered a first order reaction only, but here it is simply an RTD experiment and from this RTD analysis we have uh, formalized and justified our previous hypothesis that infinite or previous uh, this conjecture that infinite CSTR leading to a PFR. So, anyway next we have to find what is our target we have to find n and what we have our hand in our hand what we have we have the RTD curve right and once we have the RTD curve we have the different moments. we have the different moments like mean residence time which is related to fast moment or which is rather the fast moment about the origin. We have the standard deviation etc. Like <coughs> we have the E curve of a real reactor. as our baseline data. Right. So, from this E curve we can generate T m, we can generate sigma square, we can generate S cube etcetera and this much is sufficient as we have uh, though we have not proved, but I have just stated that if you specify for an RTD analysis the mean residence time, the standard deviation and skewness your it is equivalent to specifying the curve itself. So, there is another hypothesis if we do not have any dispersion in the reactor then T m equal to tau, the space time is equal to the mean residence time. I am not going to prove it, it is simply a statement and we have to remember it or note it as a statement itself. The proof 
is given in Fogler, in the book of Fogler. So, you see now, if I am thinking of Tm, what is Tm? Tm is equal to 0 to infinity T into Et into Dt, right. Now, we normalize it as T by tau, right, T by tau into tau into E T into dt by tau and there will be a tau here. So, obviously Tm by tau which will be equal to 1 according to our statement equal to 0 to infinity theta into E theta into d theta, right. It is not leading us anywhere in relation to the measurement of n. So, we can also write that E n theta into d theta theta that integral value will be equal to 1. Now, let us think of sigma square. It is 0 to infinity t minus t m whole square e t d t. So, uh, this 0 to infinity t minus tau, tau and t m are same e t dt. So, sigma square divided by tau square is theta minus 1 whole square e t into tau dt by tau, so which becomes e n theta d theta. And this is the dimensionless variance, we call it sigma theta square 0 to infinity theta minus 1 whole square e n theta d theta. Now, you see that T m, I have mentioned that let us call it tau i, but I have not mentioned how to calculate the tau i. T m from E curve, so it is the experimental part, right, we can get T m. And once we get T m, tau i will be equal to T m divided by n which is alternatively tau by n, right. But tau i as such we do not need because we have replaced this tau i in terms of n. So, our task reduces to finally calculation or determination of n. Right. Now, see T m we have obtained sigma theta is what? Sigma square by T m square that is also from experiment. We can determine the sigma square. So, left hand side of this equation is sigma square by T m square. Sigma we can obtain from E car, T m we can also obtain from E car. So, on the right hand side there is an expression. Now, if this expression simplifies to a very elementary expression of n, then from this experimental measurement of sigma square and T m square we can get the value of n. But that requires this solution of this expression coupled with this into a simple form, right. We have to solve this integral. So, let us discuss that how we can solve this integral, okay. So, sigma theta square is 0 to infinity theta square minus 2 theta plus 1 e theta d theta. So, which is 0 to infinity theta square e theta d theta minus 2 0 to infinity e theta d theta plus again 0 to infinity e theta d theta. Now, you see e theta d theta this integral will be always equal to 1 area under the E curve is unity. e theta 
d theta into theta here that we have solved also to be equal to 1. So overall it reduces to 0 to infinity theta square e theta or e n theta rather we should write e n theta e n theta d theta minus 2 plus 1 so this is minus 1 ok. Now next we will replace this we'll replace this expression 0 to infinity so n to the power n minus 1 next theta to the power n plus 1 theta to the power n minus 1 is here and here is theta square so theta to the power n minus 1 into n so this is let us write n to the power n divided by n minus 1 factorial into e to the power minus n theta d theta minus 1. So we have replaced it let me erase this part. So we have to solve this integral, right. So let us this n minus 1 and 0 to infinity. Now let n theta is x. So e to the power minus x, I think you are giving the hint, you are getting the hint that dn, sorry, n into d theta equal to dx. So, d theta is dx by n and here theta, so let us write n theta to the power n plus 2 minus 1, right, n theta to the power n plus 2 minus 1, so this is n theta is x, so x to the power n plus 2 minus 1. So, denominator will be this n to the power n plus 1, right, uh, n to the power n plus 1, we are getting in the denominator, yeah, and denominator there is also an n here and there is minus 1. So, n to the power n or rather here n to the power n plus 2. So, it is n square into n minus 1 factorial and this integral is 0 to infinity x to the power n plus 1 minus 1 e to the power minus x into dx minus 1. So, this is typically a gamma function of n plus 1, right. Gamma of n is defined as 0 to infinity e to the power minus x, x to the power n minus 1 dx. So, it is gamma of n minus 1. So, 1 by n square into n minus 1 factorial gamma of n plus 1 minus 1. So, gamma of n definitely must be an integer here. So, gamma of n plus 1 is factorial n divided by n square n minus 1 factorial minus 1. So, it is 1 divided by n divided by uh, yeah, n divided by here there will be n, n square 1 by n minus 1. No, I think there is a mistake. So, let me check it out. n to the power n, uh, theta to the power n plus 1 n minus 1 factorial e to the power minus n theta fine. So, n to the power n divided by n minus 1 factorial it is moving out. So, this is n plus 1 hmm. yeah n to the power n. So, th n to the power n plus 1 denominator here is n. So, what is happening? Right, right. So, this is n plus 2 minus 1, right? n plus 2 minus 1 into e to the power minus x. So, this is gamma of n plus 2. This is n plus 1 factorial. So, this is n plus 1 factorial, n plus 1 factorial. So, this is n into n plus 1 after cancelling out n into n plus 1. So, n plus 1 by n minus 1. So, it is 1 by n. So, finally, we have got 
the sigma theta square which is sigma square by T m square equal to 1 by n. So, that is our final expression which is to be remembered. So, you see from experiment the E curve we will get sigma square, we will get T m square and we will simply find out the n. Once we know n we can calculate this and we know tau. So, now the problem reduces to we can find the conversion of n CSTRs in series, right. n numbers of CSTRs since we have calculated so n number of CSTR we know how to calculate it and from there we can calculate the conversion of a real reactor. So, this is the basic idea of tank in series model. So, important part is that from the outcome of this entire analysis, the outcome is we have to conduct the RTD analysis on this, this reactor, we will get this Tm, we will get this sigma square and we will find out sigma square by Tm square which is sigma theta square and sigma theta square is simply 1 by n. So, find out n and we know that what will be the tau i? tau i will be equal to Tm divided by n which is simply tau divided by n based on the fact that if there is no dispersion and CSTR there will be no dispersion, right. So, we have Tm equal to tau. So, once we have n, we have tau, we have tau i, so we can calculate what will be the outlet conversion of n CSTRs in series. However, let us think that this is this model, this tank in series model is suitable for tank reactor, non-ideal tank reactor, where we have checked this non-ideal, say it is a case, case study that non-ideal tank reactor may be equivalent to 5 CSTRs in series, so we can solve. But if I have a tubular reactor and we try this tank in series model, we will get maybe 120 CSTRs in series is equivalent to this tubular reactor, because the tubular reactor tends to the performance of a PFR and PFR is nothing but infinite CSTRs in series. So, for tubular reactor, tubular non-ideal reactor, we have to think of a different one parameter model other than this tank in series. Tank in series is more suitable and was made for this tank reactors, whereas the other model known as dispersion model, that is also a single parameter model, we will discuss it in the next session, right that is actually helpful and uh, appropriate for tubular non-ideal reactor. So, that is all for this session. Thank you.